Adam and Levi. every other name. I want you to express this now, that the name of Jesus is the greatest of all names. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, we're going to listen to choir administration now from the upper location. Amelia, can you help us? much to carry let me tell you about my jesus do you feel that empty feeling for shame's done all it's dealing and you're desperate for some healing let me tell you about my jesus Who can for 
Lord above of heaven, where that thought can be. Who can chase that shadow? Make us song or join the voice. Jesus will change lives tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We'll be listening to the GS message now. Uh, Media, can you connect us to the GS message? The General Superintendent of the Deep and Life Bible Church Worldwide, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumuyi, the defender of the faith. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know when the introduction comes like that, you think the man is as tall as a ceiling. <laughs> it is for you. Amen. I said it is for you. Amen. That same anointing Amen. will pass on to you. Amen. That same authority Amen. passed on to you. Amen. And I pray that everything you have heard about me God will reproduce in your life. It can happen. It will happen. Amen. It must happen. Amen. You cannot come to the world like this and come to the crusade like this and then just go back. It's so, so Christian. It's so, so person. and managing life, tolerating life. Uh -uh. The world will know that you came to this world. Mm. And when you leave, you will leave traces of power, of progress, Amen. of prosperity, leaving Amen. behind for the rest of the people in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I wish I could come to you personally, but you know this is crowd, and I have to stay here to preach. But I wish I could come to you personally and take your hand and say, "Let's go." Amen. Not to victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh my God. I tonight, I will Amen. bless your name. Yes, for Lord. What you've done. Yes, Lord. For what you are going to do today. What you will continue to do. Lord, our hearts Amen. are one. Might, soul, yes, spirit, heart, mm. we open mm. everything to mm. you. Take the hand yes, of Lord. everyone and lead us to a Amen. lifetime of dominion. Amen. I pray, Lord, Amen. you wipe all tears away. Take Amen. all sorrow away. Amen. And I Amen. pray that you will Amen. do something definite, unforgettable in every Amen. life in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. We, Amen. Amen. we will Thank see you. that answer Lord. in every life. Amen. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Coming to a message, special message, God's highway 
for a lifetime of dominion. Let me explain to you. Oh, dominion is there because God is there. Oh, dominion is available because I God mean. is ready. Dominion is for you. Present dominion, perpetual dominion, perfect dominion, a lifetime of dominion. Picture it. It's over there and you are over here. And we need to make a road between you and that dominion. I'll show you in the word of God. And then you can walk uprightly and get to that lifetime of dominion. You understand? In our country. You understand? In our state. That's when the produce is in the farm. Provision is in the farm. To feed the state and to feed the nation. But if there's no road... We cannot get that produce from the farm and get to the people. And the people cannot move on and get to the produce. The thing is there, but there's no road to take us there. That's why you find uh, some governors and our own governor here in Ogun State. Constructing road, road so that the highway will be there to take us and to take the produce to the place it ought to be. And God has done that. Dominion. Help me shout dominion. dominion. A lifetime of dominion. And then the highway, the way of the Lord that he constructs for you to take step after step on the road, on the highway that the Lord himself has made so that you will not miss that dominion in Jesus' name. I'm reading to you from Isaiah chapter 35. And we're reading from verse 4. It says in verse 4, Say to them that of a fearful heart, if you are there, you are afraid. If you are there, you are fretful. If you are there, you are anxious. If you are there, you are worried. And you say, how can I get to that dominion full and free and for a lifetime? How can I get there? The Lord sent me to tell you that tonight is your appointed time. Say to them that of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. Your God, the creator. Your God, the redeemer. Your God, the mighty one. The, your God, the God that cannot fail. It says, your God will come. Tonight, the power of God will come. The solution to your problem will come. Tonight, the promises of God will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. Your God will come with vengeance. Even God, with a recompense, he will come and save you. Are you there? You are the reason for the meeting tonight. Your God will come. He will come and save you. Look at verse 5. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened. The ears of the dead shall be unstopped. And then in verse 6, it tells us, Then shall the lame man leap as an heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out, and streams in the desert. Look at verse 7. Then it tells us, And the parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water, in the habitation of dragons, where each lay shall grass, shall be grass with reeds and rushes. And then in verse 8, it says, And an highway shall be there, an highway made by God. And an highway shall be there, an highway established by Christ. And an highway shall be there, an highway that is open for you, and open for me, and open for everyone. And those who walk on that highway, they get to that dominion. I get to that dominion. And you get to that dominion tonight in Jesus' name. It says, and it shall be called the way of holiness. Of course, you understand. It's a holy God in a holy heaven, surrounded by holy angels. And then the men who have left this world and they have gone, holy men and women, the streets, holy street, everything about it. There's no defilement, there's no sin, there's no corruption there. Holy. And because of that, the highway and the past. 
that the almighty God, the holy God of the holy heaven, the highway that he makes shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those the wayfaring men, though fools shall not err therein. You will not miss that way. I said you will not miss that way. And then he tells us in verse 9, he says in verse 9, no lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed of the Lord shall walk there. That's why the Lord is going to get to you tonight. It will save you. It will redeem you. It will forgive you. It will establish you because the redeemed of the Lord shall walk therein. And then in verse 10, it says, and the ransomed and the saved, and the forgiven, and the redeemed, and the converted, the ransomed of the Lord shall return, and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy. Joy, 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 happiness, gladness. The Lord will erase everything that has brought sorrow in your heart, suffering in your life, sickness in your life, and then it says, you come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness. Who are they? They shall obtain that joy and gladness. As you link up with Christ tonight, the source of all joy and the source of all gladness and the source of all happiness, as you link up to Christ tonight, it will fill you with joy and gladness and sorrow and sign shall flee away and sorrow and suffering shall flee away i was waiting for a bear what i amen and sorrow and suffering shall flee away and then your life will be a happy life your family a happy family and then your life and your life and your and your lifestyle everything will bring the joy and the gladness of the lord in your life in jesus name but you know but you know there's an highway and highway is constructed that people will take that highway no matter how good the way is the road is expressway no matter how good an expressway is if you don't get on that expressway and you have the destination at the end of that expressway you will remain where you have always been but it is when you make up your mind you decide look at the expressway that the lord has made and i get up by decision and then i move on determination and i keep on moving diligence and i don't allow anything to stop me in the way by the grace of god you will get there tonight god's highway not man's highway god's highway for a lifetime of dominion we're dividing the message to three parts number one god's only way for the helpless and the hopeless god's only way it's not made any other way one way only way god's only way for the hopeless and the helpless number two god's open way <clears throat> god has blessed you god's open way he opens the way you know there are times that a way an express way has been made and then you put a toll gate and close it up and they say they are setting a date when that way will be open and they're still deciding on what the travelers will pay one after the other but god's way is already open open for you to come and enter in because it is open god's open way to healing and health are you there tonight blind eyes will open the deaf ears will hear and the impossible unthinkable will happen in your life you will carry healing health miracle you'll carry that from tonight in jesus name number three god's ordained way of holiness to heaven god's ordained way of holiness to heaven oh somebody said pastor leave that holiness beat apart tell us about healing Tell us about prosperity. Tell us about happy family. Tell us about something on earth. And I say, my friend, you understand? Healing is good only for the earth. Prosperity, money, wealth, good only for the earth. And if all you get from the Lord 
is healing, healing, healing. Yes, you get healing, but that is for the earth. If you don't get what will take you to heaven, if you get all the healing for 70 years, 80 years, 100 years here, and all eternity you do not have what will take you to heaven, then the crusade would have been a waste. Because eternity is longer. Eternity, a hundred years, a thousand years, a million years, a trillion years, forever and ever, eternity is there. That's why we get from the Lord, we get hope, we get health, we get harmony, we get healing, we get health, we get wholesomeness, wholeness. But with all that, we still have to have holiness because it is that holiness that will take you to heaven. You will get there. You will get there. I don't want to be in a religion that only gives me good things, happy things, great things here on earth, and it doesn't show me the way to get to heaven. I'll be wasting my life in that religious circle. Now, point number three, God's ordained way of holiness to heaven. I'm going there. I said I'm going there. And with the highway of the Lord giving and shown unto us, you will get there in Jesus' name. Maybe your mansion will be next to my mansion, and every day in eternity, I'll say, I told you. I told then you'll say, Yes, you told me, and I accepted. You are here, I am here, we'll be there together. Yeah. We're coming to point number one now. God's only way for the hopeless and helpless. You know, the Lord makes the way, and He tells us very simple. He said, This is the way, what ye therein. I'm looking at John chapter 14, and we're looking at verse 6. John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus says unto him, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He told us the absolute truth. He told us the unchangeable truth. He told us the eternal truth. I am the way. The way between the sinner and the almighty God to get us reconciled unto God. He said, I am. I am. I am the way. And if you are going to see life and life eternal, you are high or you are low, you are big or you are small, you are educated or you are not educated, you are civilized or you are not civilized, you know book or you don't know book, you are going to school, you are not going to school, you are a father, you are a mother, you are a child, you are a daughter, you are a son, anyone you are, this is the way. He said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man, no man in any place no man whatever the name that he has or the society that he has no man cometh unto the father but by me he has only one way jesus and that jesus is presented to you today and also come through that way through jesus christ and you don't take a bypass you don't take another corner jesus is there he stands between man and god and he says come and i so come i will take you take your hand and take you to the father as you do that tonight you will get to god in this world god will be your father God will be your redeemer. And then God will write your name in the book of life in heaven. He'll say, that is mine. That is mine. That is mine. And then on the final day, you will be with God forever and ever, forever and ever in Jesus' name. Now, that point number one is God's only way for the hopeless and helpless. What do we refer to man as hopeless and helpless? Let me take it a little further. What do we refer to you? Descendant of Adam and Eve, what do we refer to you as hopeless and helpless? Look at Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 15. For that which I do, I allow not. I'm helpless. I'm hopeless. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. That's man. That's man. He has good intention, but he doesn't have good ability to be able to carry it out. He has the knowledge and he knows the revelation that this is the way to live. He cannot live like that because for that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that I do not. I know the word. I know the expectation. I know the commandment. I know the right way, but I don't have the strength. 
I don't have the power. I don't have the ability. I am helpless. And because man is helpless, man is hopeless. Look at verse 16. In verse 16 there it says, If then I do that which I would not, I wouldn't even approve of what I'm doing. There's a, there are fathers that will tell their children, don't look at me, don't do what I do. If you do what I do, look at the result, don't do what I do. Why do they say that? Because they know what they're doing is not their intention. What they're doing is not their plan. There is a power above them, the power of depravity in their lives that they couldn't do what they ought to do. There are mothers that will call their daughters and say, my daughter, I know you know the way I live, you know the way I talk, and you know the places I go, you know the, you know the other people that are into my life, apart from your dad. But I want to tell you, my daughter, don't do as I do. Why do they say that? Because they know, they know the right way and the right thing, but they cannot because they are helpless. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good look at verse 17 in verse 17 now then it is no more i that do it but sin that dwelleth in me on the throne of every heart of any man any woman sin sits on the throne sin controls that life and sin is the king and the ruler and a tyrant in that person's life that he cannot just do what he wants to do go the way he wants to go it says sin that dwelleth in me look at verse 18 there in verse 18 for i know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing but will is present with me i take resolutions i make up my mind i said i will not do that but the power to carry that out i do not have i know what it means to be righteous but i'm not righteous i know what it means to be upright but i'm not upright i know what it means to be incorruptible but i am not incorruptible there is corruption corruption in the life corruption in the action corruption in life in general it says what dwelleth in me no good thing but to will is present with me but how to perform that which is good i find not the man has not found the way but tonight that only way jesus christ you will find the way of uprightness and the way of salvation and the way of the gospel and the way of the revelation of God from heaven that will lead you from a life of sin to an experience of salvation. It will do that tonight. Look at verse 19. In verse 19 it says, For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not. The evil that I say to other people, teach other people, instruct other people that they should not do. I find that I do. It says, for the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Verse 20, verse 20 tells us, now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it but sin that dwelleth in me. That is what Christ, the Savior, the Redeemer, that's what he, he wants to remove. He wants he will get you out of that intricate situation that in your private life you know. In your secret life you know. All alone by yourself you know. The hopelessness, the helplessness, the powerlessness. But then you come to Christ with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And say, Jesus, I see that in myself. The way to salvation is not there. But now I know. Now I know that God has sent you to be the only way. The only way to salvation. And the only way to dominion. And tonight, salvation is yours. Is that all the amen you have over there? Amen. God bless you. Dominion will be yours. Hope has come. Help has come. Harmony has come. You see, the man who is hopeless, the man who is helpless, he does not have the harmony. The head is different from the heart. There's no harmony. The knowledge is different from the ability. There's no harmony. He knows the right thing. He knows the way to go. But there's no harmony to join both the character 
and he'll not let you get there. But then Christ comes to your life tonight. I say Christ comes to your life tonight. Help has come. Hope has come. Harmony has come. All the jigsaws, the jigsaws that have been, and you try to put that together and marry everything together, and there's no harmony. And you don't know how you put all those pieces together tonight, all the pieces of your life scattered here and there that is having this harmony helplessness hopelessness christ comes tonight and in a moment of time everything will come together your life will come together your destiny will come together and then you go through this way who is christ and then everything will be all right in your life everything will be all right in the progress of life that you make, everything will be all right. In the ability to carry out everything you know, and then step by step, step by step, harmoniously, that will be your life. Everything will come together in Jesus' name. Look at Romans chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 8. Romans chapter 10, reading from verse 8. But what saith each? The word is nigh to you. The word of hope is near you. The word of help. Is near you and the word of harmony is near you the word is near thee even in thy mouth and in thine heart that is the word of faith which will preach look at verse 9 in verse 9 that if thou shall confess shall profess shall declare with thy mouth the Lord Jesus he is the way and if you will declare and if you will confess and if you'll proclaim that Jesus is my Lord I tried to rule my life I tried to control my life I tried to direct myself but the sin that dwelleth in me did not allow me to have a straight course towards salvation and dominion but now if you will come and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved I said thou shalt be saved oh, somebody says why that person is saved why am I not saved because you have not confessed with your mouth that you hand over your life to Jesus Christ that Jesus is your Lord you have uh, been satisfied with whatever position you hold in a local church whatever position you hold in a, in a denomination you are satisfied with that but you know that the denomination the church the fellowship cannot give you the victory sin still dwells in everyone but as you come and you say Lord I make you now my Lord. You are my Savior. As young people are taking him as Savior, you, an older person, you take him as Savior. As the husband is taking him as Savior, the wife is taking him as Savior. As the parents are taking him as Savior, you children, you are taking him as Savior. You confess with your mouth, you proclaim with your mouth, you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved look at verse 10 in verse 10 for what the heart man believeth unto righteousness what the heart man believeth not from the head what not with the mind what the heart the deepest part of you with all your heart all your soul with your whole heart that there's no rival to jesus in your life is the one and the only one your savior and redeemer with your heart you believe unto salvation and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation amen in your life today salvation in your life today redemption in your life today you take god's only way for the hopeless and the helpless look at number two here we're looking at number two god's open way god's open way to healing and health god's open way to healing and health god has made the way and he has opened the way that you will have healing in your body Okay, I will have healing in my body. I will have health in my body. I will have wholeness in my body. Healing, health, wholeness. Healing, health, wholeness. It's coming to you tonight. Everything that is broken in your life will be repaired tonight. From the top of your head, your brain. All the things there, the Lord will reset everything. Your body, 
everything that is swollen there, the Lord will correct everything. The pain you have in the chest, in the heart, God will repair everything. The kidneys that are not functioning anymore very well, and you have to go to them, they do dialysis, they bring out the blood, purify the blood, get it back. Tonight, healing is coming your way. And then the diabetes, you know, you urinate now, and then 10 minutes again, you run to the restroom, you come back, and 15 minutes again, you run, and you come back, solution has come tonight. And then hepatitis, whatever, the Lord is going to touch you tonight. You, you had that testimony from Lagos, cancer, cancer taking away every form of cancer. You know there are various forms of cancer. Sometimes there's cancer in the in the in the brain. In the, sometimes there's cancer on the armpit. Sometimes there's cancer on the breast. Sometimes there's cancer and it is leukemia in all the blood system. But anywhere that cancer is tonight, the Lord will take it away in Jesus' name. Look at Isaiah chapter 35. Isaiah chapter 35. Chapter 35. I'm reading from verse 4. Isaiah chapter 35. And we're reading from verse 4. It says, Say to them that of a fearful heart, to them that of a fearful heart, will this sickness kill me from tonight? There's no fear again. Will this, this thing kill so and so and kill so and so for you? As you are here tonight, the Lord has sent the Lord Jesus Christ to perform and perfect your healing. Say to them that of a fearful heart, be strong. Fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. It will take that sickness as his enemy. He'll trash that sickness. He'll conquer that, uh, that sickness. It will crush that sickness tonight in Jesus' name. Even God with a recompense and he will come and save you. The devil sent his messenger sickness. He said, kill him. And God says, no. I'm interested in him. It's my son. She's my daughter. Move your hand from this. And Satan, sickness, will remove their hands away from your life tonight in Jesus' name. There's somebody there lying down. Helpless as if, what can I do tonight? When I mention the name of Jesus upon you, strength will come. Power will come. Healing will come. You will get up. I said you will get up. Because he will come and save you. He will come and heal you. He will come and deliver you. He will come and rescue you. He will come and renew your body tonight in Jesus' name. Look at verse Amen. 5. Amen. At that time when the Lord comes and he comes to save, he comes to heal, he comes to deliver, he comes to set free, then at that time the eyes of the blind will be opened. Tonight, those blind eyes will open. And then it says, And the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. All the deadness of the membrane, of those inner parts of the ear, everything will get a new re in renewal tonight in Jesus' name. How? Matthew chapter 8. In Matthew chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 16. When the evening was come. Tonight, where we are now. Is this morning or afternoon or evening? In the evening of your miracle. The evening of your healing. The evening of your deliverance. The evening of joy, 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 jubilation in the house. In Jesus' name. When the evening was come, they brought unto him. Uh -huh. That's the way. You have to bring your sick body your sick mind, you have to bring your diseased body unto him. Come through the way. It's an open way. Open way that is opened for our healing, for our health, and for wholesomeness in our lives. They brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and they cast out the spirits with this world. Tonight, oh, yeah. that word is still as powerful. Heaven and earth may pass away, shall pass away, but his word shall not pass away. The word of power, still here today. The word for healing, still there today. And the word for deliverance, still there today. He cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. How many did he heal? And healed all that were sick. Who are the people inside that all? Tell me. 
tell me there is no incurable disease before the Lord Jesus Christ. All, all, any sickness, any infirmity, any disease, any demonic power, he healed all that was sick. Look at chapter verse 17. It says in verse 17 that it may be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. How can I explain that to you? Let me explain this way. There's an empty chair maybe beside you or maybe in front of you. And then we'll say, please uh, carry that chair out of that place and carry it to a place where we will not see it. You're strong enough to carry the chair. It's just an ordinary chair. Look at the chair there. And then you carry and then you take it away and you dump it somewhere where you cannot see it again. If you are powerful enough to carry that chair, Christ with all power. All power in heaven and on earth is given unto him. He says, he can carry your sickness. He can carry your infirmity. He can carry that deformity. And as easy it is for you to carry the chair, so easy, even easier for Christ to carry all your sicknesses away. Himself took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses. Make it personal. Himself took my 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 infirmities and bear my sicknesses looks like you are strong already you are well already you are healed already come is the open way to our healing and to our help acts chapter 10 reading from verse 38 acts 10 verse 38 how god anointed jesus of nazareth special anointing unique anointing irreversible irresistible anointing anywhere he went he went with that anointing and no demon was able to stand before him and no disease was able to stand before him how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power who went about doing good is going about everywhere all those who are connected mm -hmm. with this uh, crusade, as we're speaking now, they will get to you. Mm -hmm. They will get to you. And then those who mm -hmm. are here, look up, look up, and look at me. Those who are here, let our eyes match. He's getting to you tonight. He went about mm -hmm. doing healing all that were oppressed of the devil. He's greater than the devil. He's mightier than the devil. He's stronger than the devil. Whatever the devil has done or is doing in your body, he will not play any trick with your body anymore because tonight the Lord will heal those who are oppressed of the devil in Jesus' name. Amen. He was with him. He was with God. He was on earth at that time. God was in heaven, and God was with him. Now, 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 he's gone to be with the heavenly Father. He's sitting on the right hand of majesty, and now he is with God, and God is with him. Sicknesses will have no place in your life. Look at Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 13. We're looking at verse 8. Hebrews 13, verse 8, Jesus Christ, a Savior. Jesus Christ, our healer. Jesus Christ, our deliverer, Jesus Christ, our defender, Jesus Christ, the open way to health and healing, Jesus Christ, our shepherd, Jesus Christ, that does not want, does not want to see anyone suffer, Jesus Christ, the same, yesterday, today, and forever. forever. The power forever. does not change. The love does not decrease. And the intention to heal and to deliver that intention and that ability does not decrease because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. We'll do it in your life. Amen. Tonight, Amen. your night of healing, your night Amen. of wellness, and your night Amen. of coming dominion, power, authority over every sickness in Jesus' name. It's the name at the mention of the name of Jesus. That healing will come to you. That deliverance will come to you. Because that's how we teach in days come by and everyone that came to him, everyone he came to immediately, instantaneously, the same hour 
the healing came to them and if he has not changed as he was yesterday he is today and he is forever he must do it in your life today Amen. the only way we're seeing the open way. Now we come to the ordained way. Look at point number three here. God's ordained way of holiness to heaven. Look at what we have. Number one, we have hope. Number two, Amen. we have help. Number three, Amen. we have harmony. Number Amen. four, we have healing. Number five, Amen. we have health. Number six, Amen. we have wholeness. And now, Amen. number seven, we also have holiness. We're well in the body. We're well in the soul. We're well in our spirit. The threefold man, spirit, soul, and body, wholeness will come to you through and through in Jesus' name. Look at Isaiah chapter 35. We're reading from verse 8. Isaiah chapter 35, verse 6. And an highway shall be there. A way. It shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. Ah, what do I do then? I'm unclean. I'm defiled. I'm a sinner. I'm not born again. I'm not converted. And it says the unclean shall not pass over it. I'll explain to you. Mm -hmm. At the gate of that ordained way, there is the fountain of the blood of Jesus. And as you come there, and you plunge by faith in that fountain of the blood of Jesus, all your uncleanness will be washed away. Yeah. And tonight, that's what the psalmist said, wash me, purge me, and I shall be whiter than snow. He will wash you tonight, and all the uncleanness mm -hmm. will be washed away. All the defilement mm -hmm. will be washed away. You see, I mm -hmm. hate myself for the unclean things I do, the unclean things I say, and the unclean things I get involved with. Because you hate it, you come to the Lord at the gate of the ordained way. He will say, I know your heart. I know your desire. Leave it in my hand tonight. I'll wash you clean. He'll wash you clean tonight. I said he'll wash you clean tonight. And then that mm. uncleanness, everything will vanish away. It says there, mm. but it shall be for those the way fearing men, do fools, do fools. Now, understand the language, understand the word. Do fools, everyone, everyone on earth, no matter how wise, how intelligent, is a fool in one area or the other. Take education, for example. Somebody is, uh, you know, well, well learned in mathematics, but is a fool when it comes to biology, when it comes to all those, uh, all those uh, cells of the body and the functions of. Is a fool, even though he knows maths, he does not know the biology. Take somebody who is an engineer and he can construct any road and all that, but as a medical doctor, is a fool. He does not know. How to perform any operation, how to dissect this and that, no matter how intelligent one is in one area, he is a fool. Take somebody who is educated in earthly knowledge, but when it comes to salvation, when it comes to redemption, when it comes to getting to heaven, is a fool. He doesn't know. He may know philosophy. He may know that one and that one. But as it concerns the life in Christ, eternal life, how do we get there? He is a fool. Somebody who knows a lot of the history of uh, idolatry and he can say that, you know, this and that and that. And he has all that knowledge of idolatry. And he can tell the foundation and the time of cultism came to that part and that part. And when he talks, he talks like authority. But when it comes to how man gets Get saved and man gets eternal life. He knows occultism, he doesn't know salvation. Everyone is a fool one way or the other, but the way fearing men do fools. I didn't know this before I accept. I was a fool. I didn't know the way of salvation. Now I come, you will not miss your way. Because tonight, anyone and everyone that will come, the Lord will accept everyone. No matter where you have been, no matter what you have done, no matter the confusion in your life, you will not miss the way of salvation. The ordained way of the Lord, mm -hmm. and when he cleanses your life, when he changes your life, when he turns your life around, he gives you that holiness without which no man shall save the Lord. We don't need to prolong it. The Lord is here tonight. I said the Lord is Amen. here tonight. 
and everything we need, Amen. we need, the Lord is going to grant unto you. Just accept, just accept. I have been a fool. I didn't know. There are many things you don't know in your life, but now tonight, I know. I know the only way. That's Jesus. I know the it's God's own way. That's Jesus. I know the ordained way to get to heaven. I must go through Jesus, and as you give your life to Jesus, hand over your life to Jesus, surrender or reservedly unto Jesus tonight. Salvation from heaven will come in your soul. And then healing, deliverance from every attack and from every disease is going to set you free tonight in Jesus' name. Are you there? Mm -hmm. I said, are you there? Yes, sir. Say amen. Let yes, me hear you. Amen. Amen. Let's bow and I close. I rejoice with you tonight. Today is your day. Tonight is your night. All the helplessness in sin, all the hopelessness in sin, the Lord has come to give you hope. He has come to give you help. He has come to forgive your sin. He has come to give you the inner strength and the inner power. And he has come to take all the uncleanness away out of your life tonight. A night of hope. A night of help. A night of harmony in your life. A night of salvation. Wherever you are, this is your night like no other night. Raise up that hand and say, Lord, I was helpless. The things I wanted to do, I couldn't do. The life I wanted to live, I couldn't live. But now, you're my help. You're my hope. You're my savior. Anywhere you are, raise up that hand. That's right. That's right. God bless you. God bless you. And God, turn your life around tonight in Jesus' name. If you're raising up your hand, just take a step of faith and stand up. Stand up for Jesus to save you. Stand up for Jesus to forgive you. Stand up for Jesus to cleanse you in the fountain of the cleansing blood. Oh, By faith, yeah. you confess him. You profess him. You declare him that he is the Lord of your life and the Lord of your soul, oh. the Lord of your personality, that he will continue to direct you and control you from today. Raise up your hand and stand Amen. up. And wherever you are in any congregation, in any country, this is the time. Raise up your hand and stand up and say, Lord, here am I. Be my savior tonight and let my life turn around for the better. Keep standing. I'm going to pray with you now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because you have shown us the way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The true way of life into the kingdom of God. And I pray for those who have indicated, raise up their hands, and they're standing up, and they want the salvation, forgiveness, freedom, eternal life. Give it to everyone in Jesus' name. I pray Amen. for those who perish. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal everlasting life. I pray, Lord, all these people have indicated and they have handed over their lives unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Let them have real salvation in Jesus' Amen. name. Cancel helplessness away from their lives. Cancel hopelessness away from their lives. Grant them hope, Amen. help, Harmony, salvation, conversion tonight. Confirm each in every life, Lord. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Another. Amen. 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 Um, let's spend some time to pray for those who have given their life to Jesus Christ. Make sure you commit yourself to the Lord. Repent of any sin, that is any sin, and accept Christ into your heart. Make sure there is a transformation, a change in your, in your heart. Spend this time to pray and commit yourself to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. This is a very important moment. Talk to the Lord, and the Lord is going to touch you and transform your life in the name of Jesus Christ. After this, um, the media, we uh, connect us to pastor's prayer for miracles and deliverance. Let's pray and commit ourselves to the Lord. You have not been converted. 
we have not received the new experience of salvation is a moment the change will happen in your life the transformation will happen in your life the blood of jesus cleanses away from all sins pray unto the lord ask god for forgiveness if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness the blood of jesus will wash you will cleanse you will transform your life in the name of jesus christ Amen. talk to the lord talk to the lord Amen. make sure you talk to the lord if you have backslidden you have only gone back the time to return back to the lord it's time to turn back to the lord it's time to turn back to the lord is there any sin habitual sin any kind of addiction to anything the law can break the you the blood of jesus is available there's a moment to talk to the lord and ask god lord change my life transform my life in the name of jesus christ talk to the lord right now the lord will save you that the lord will transform you that the lord will wash you with his blood in the name of jesus christ Okay. Let's pray for those people we know in our church, in our family, around us that are still struggling with sin. Let's pray that there is a moment of deliverance, a moment of release in their soul, in their spirit. And the Lord will give them a supernatural release from the bondage of sin. From the yoke of sin, let's pray God will touch them and they will have their new experience of salvation, their new experience of conversion in the name of Jesus Christ. The yoke of sin will be broken, the yoke of addiction will be broken, the yoke of repeated sinfulness will be destroyed, and they shall be free in the name of Jesus Christ by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Media, can you uh, please connect us with uh, pastor's prayer? Amen. 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 If you can stand up, please stand up. A time of healing. A time of awareness, a time of wholeness in your life. Amen. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, tell me, and forever. And forever. The hour has come. The hour has come. The hour has come. Every form of sickness will vanish away. Amen. Every disease will vanish away. Every infirmity will vanish away. And all those oppressions of the enemy in your body, all those manipulations of the enemy in your body, today the Lord will put an end to it. Look at yourself now. Those evil things that you see today, 